Let's define art and explain its use in society. Art can communicate information, shape our everyday lives, make a social statement, and be enjoyed for aesthetic beauty. Art is a way for us to express our feelings and emotions through a form of maybe garment making or maybe drawing something physically on a piece of paper. Now imagine the society without art, for there would be no self-expression and life would be quite boring uninteresting. We wouldn't have any music. We wouldn't have anyone taping bananas onto a canvas and calling it art. And art also contributes to a lot of cultural defining moments in history as well in our society. Now that I've defined slightly what art is, I know I didn't really go too deep into it, but just a very slight slice of life there. Let's get into the people in art. Never date anyone in the art field because they are all mentally ill, unstable, and all self-destructive. Now let's ignore that controversial statement that I just made, and let's proceed onwards to what I have to say. Just like you and me, there are people that do business. There are people that have to be heartless to be a CEO, a psychopath, and that takes a very specific person. The same thing is involved with a lot of artists. Not anyone can pick up the craft and understand how to do it, or do it correctly, or do it well. Is there a right or wrong way? Not really. Everything's quite subjective, but we tend to see a lot of artists uh, tend to be very mentally ill where they're able to then express how they're feeling, whether that's schizophrenia or depression, and they're able to very much encapsulate it onto some sort of art. And typically those types of arts tend to be quite interesting, quite zany, very cool, very swag, and we all stare at it and we enjoy it. Now self-expression through art tends to be in a very high pressured extreme lens. And to make something great, does it take a lot of time and effort for a lot of artists to then push themselves to make that form of art? But typically when you're feeling very high or extreme emotions, can you very much distribute that into something beautiful? Now this reminds me of a defense mechanism called sublimation that I feel like a lot of artists tend to have. Now from the many defense mechanisms, this one tends to be the most positive out of the rest but here's the definition. The defense mechanism, sublimation, allows you to use positive forces like art, music, sports, or other creative outlets to express your emotions. Often it can keep you from resorting to violence or other inappropriate behaviors. Now, typically we do see sublimation being used very much so in art, where you might harness a lot of anger for something, your family, your dad that left you to go get milk, and you're able to redirect those emotions and feelings into something artistic. And we can say this in a very hyper sense where the most extreme type of person with these emotions are able to use sublimation to make something very beautiful and very abstract. Now, to further my point, I'd like to get into Carl Jung's The Shadow. Jung and his construct of the human self develops a useful structure in which we can both avoid the dark consequences of our repressed impulses and at the same time tap into the unused creative energy of such impulses. Jung and his constructs of the human self develops a useful structure in which we can both avoid the dark consequences of our repressed impulses and at the same time tap into the unused creative energy of such impulses. Jung devised the self contains multiple aspects. The persona, for example, is our mask or your social personality. Now that's with the idea that you even have one of those. Now if the ego is our sense of consciousness in terms of thoughts and memories, the persona is the interfacing between the ego and the world. And it filters out who we are in order to survive and even thrive in society. With the idea of thriving, some may fall in love with their persona at the suffering of their ego, which they live entirely performative and curated lives. The issue, according to Jung, is that inevitably, all that we have repressed in the service of the persona will come out in some way. This collection of repressed impulses, darker tendencies, and that which our ego or society may label as shameful or harmful is called the shadow, which is the interface between the ego and inner self. The shadow is the aspects you hide. Of course, the shadow can't be hidden for very long. This is evident when we look at those who have crafted attractive personas such as artists, designers, and entertainers. These people have brilliantly designed a social mask to the point in which they are admired and glorified for what they are able to do, or at least appear to. However, as Nisha notes, everything profound loves masks. In other words, a profound shadow requires a persona that can match its abyss. 
And so we may observe racist scandals, trauma, and substance abuse, which follows many of these artists. Now with understanding the shadow and how artists or designers have hidden away their intrusive thoughts and feelings, do we see the cracks surface through the art they make, and that we as consumers admire? Yet, we truly don't understand where their inspiration comes from to make said art. Being unaware isn't your fault. A lot of artists never state what their art is really about. It's really up to interpretation, and what you may draw from it. Even if the artist meant it as a representation of his love for something that was socially unacceptable, our perception of the artist might change, but the art stays the same. It's still interesting to look at, and it's still good as it is, but we get entangled in this very sticky situation where now we're quite aware of why they created that art piece and why it was connected to them and what they may have thought while creating it, what influenced them. With this idea in mind, even in a visual sense, fashion can represent so much if you take a look into what defines some garments. Meaning, sure you may wear symbols and think, oh it's cool, but there's history behind what they mean and what they can represent to someone. As art functions as a creative outlet for most artists, do we have to understand that this outlet has underlined intention and connection to the artist regardless if you choose to be ignorant to what is in front of you? To separate all meaning from an artist is an excuse to justify indulging in controversy without any repercussions. Now with that being said, physically supporting the artist by maybe buying their product or buying their merch with the idea in mind that you are aware of why they created or, or whatever their controversy was wrapped up within what they're doing, does that contribute to supporting the artist? Now staying away from the music side of this, and I want to just focus solely on the fashion part of this, is when a brand has racist undertones or has gone into a controversy that is not very socially accepted, can we get into a situation where buying their clothing secondhand is not really contributing to supporting them. Although, wearing it might also represent the brand itself. Another great example would be the whole Balenciaga campaign with the use of children and so on and so forth. I don't need to explain it. Now, I saw a lot of people expressing their hatred for people that wear Balenciaga or were still buying it. Even if you buy it secondhand and you were wearing a Balenciaga shirt of some sort, you're not physically supporting the brand, but you are representing it in a sense. But I saw a lot of people go to the conclusion that you supported what Balenciaga did or you yourself were a now, I know I'm playing devil's advocate here, but I think it's quite extreme to jump to the conclusion that people support the ideology of some designers and brands when they say racist stuff or they say something that's crazy. That doesn't mean that you support them. You can still like items that you see physically in the sense of fashion. And I still think it's an okay thing to do if you want to indulge in Balenciaga or DNG if you buy it secondhand, for you're not physically supporting the brand by giving them your money, but you are still representing them and people might ask you where the piece comes from. Because at the end of the day, you don't owe anyone to identify what pieces of clothing you're wearing. You could just say, I thrifted it. And I think that's what a lot of people end up doing to just avoid the whole controversial things where they might be wearing a brand that's not necessarily of good lights or social standing. And to me personally, I think that's the best route to do. If you decide to wear something where the designer was, you know, did something really bad, but you still owned a piece of their clothing, it's better to get use out of it versus throwing it away, cutting it up for the internet, or I don't know, I guess the second best thing is to give it away as well. But to me personally, I think if you're buying it secondhand, you're not necessarily contributing to anything bad, but you might wanna stay silent about the brand or designer of that piece of clothing, do a little gatekeeping. That's not gonna hurt anybody. Now to the people that separate the art from the artist, are you a horrible human being? Now, that's not for me to make judgment or cast judgment upon you, but if you are a fan account saying, free R. Kelly, you are sick, you need help. But I think you can still indulge in some, some type of music and, and also indulge in some designers because me not listening to Kanye definitely destroyed my brain sphere and it definitely damages my emotions every day because I can't listen to Life of Pablo. There were so many like allegations coming out from different artists and stuff and personally the way I viewed it was like, I guess my time's up to not listen to this person anymore and I will proceed onward to find somebody newer, cooler, and more interesting. Is it really that difficult to just put it down and move on to something new? Not really, but I understand why people will want to stick to, you know, old is better, totally understand. Me personally, it didn't affect my life at the end of the day, uh, unless it was like Yoji, if he like did something crazy, uh, that definitely would affect my life and I I'd probably would not want to leave um, him,
but I would still buy his clothes secondhand, you know? That's my loophole. If you buy it secondhand, you're not really supporting the brand, and I probably would just lie about where I got the items, and yeah, I would probably live my life in, in blissful ignorance in a sense. I would still recognize what he did was wrong, but I would still be wearing his uh, his items because he's a good designer and I love how it fits on me. Does that make me a horrible human being? Maybe, maybe not. I don't even know why I made this video. But I truly believe that some artists deserve redemption. And what I mean by some artists is that sometimes there's some artists that are too far gone and or are not willing to learn from their mistakes or apologize. But we have to remember that these are all human beings. I am a human being. One day I might get wrapped up in some type of controversy for something I said in the past or what I might say in the future. I will definitely make mistakes and I'm definitely not always correct. I know it's nuts especially to believe that I might be wrong, but I don't always have the right opinion and maybe my way of thought isn't necessarily okay. And I think we should educate people, or even you educate me, about certain things that I might believe that aren't necessarily correct. And I think that's a way that we can all fully grow as people just in general. I think the worst thing we could do for people is to have assumptions about what their character is and put them in this box where you believe that they're a foundational person. And when you end up finding out that they have a really weird way of thought, we get quite disappointed. And it's because we put unrealistic standards on people, human beings that are bound to fail. Everyone's bound to fail. We all make mistakes. We all say things that might not necessarily align with how we actually feel. And I really want you to imagine yourself being in the public eye for so long and to be a very hyper specific way all the time for the public's view because they want you to be this kind of eye candy, this this person that will never do anything wrong. Am I giving these people a pass? No, but I think we should lower our expectations because at the end of the day, they probably are bad people. They might be, who knows? I think the nicest people are always the scariest to me personally because there's some underlying um, unhingedness with them. I don't trust people that are really happy because they have to be lying to themselves. And the people that are hyper positive give me a very fake feeling that they're maybe lying to themselves because they're so sad inside. I might be a sociopath, like who knows? I mean, I feel like that definitely fits my persona. Whatever you might think that I am, I'm probably not. And I will definitely disappoint you in the future. There's all these things that I think that we cast upon people where we truly believe that these people can do no wrong. And when they do wrong, we're very shocked and surprised. To me personally, when an artist gets in a controversy, I'm not that surprised. I'm like, you know, that's probably his true nature or how he actually felt, but he was forced to put on a social mask to then proceed to pretend to be something that he's not. And that happens often with your friends, your family, these people can't necessarily be trusted for what they put out as this visual representation of what they're trying to, I guess, show you. At the end of the day, when you take the mask off, are you truly who you are? That was cringe, I'm, I don't know, I was so cringe. Um, but yeah, you get what I'm saying, I'm done. last episode you saw that I got the bag in hand now what we get to do for this episode is go to a photo shoot we styled the models and now we got to take pictures of the models and we got a studio out in New York so I'm going to take you along for the ride to show you the behind the scenes because I just wanted to add that in here so that we can develop a nice parasocial relationship that I do crave with my audience so let's go do that I did end up changing because it is actually not as cold as I thought it was uh, you can see the clothes in the back. I'm kind of in a rush, but I'm wearing this cool cardigan underneath and then I got this tie And a white tee big pants Yeah, this is a fit so Today my hair's still wet Today I'm gonna to show you the final production piece of this bag that I have right here. I already showed off, this is like technically the first sample. This is gonna be my bag that I'm gonna wear, but there was a few things that we changed and altered, and we're gonna see that on this next bag. 
So let's go. So this is the final produced bag for this little clothing project that I'm a part of. Anyway, the things we changed are very few. It has a thicker shoulder strap that is like reinforced and the bag has some more steel reinforcement staples. The zippers are now Recogni zippers. And if you know, you know. And here are a few small details about the bag, just in general. It is a vegetable dyed leather and it's a full grain Exuma leather lambskin, which is tanned in Tuscany. We got Recogni zippers on it, which are made in Italy and the hardware is all solid metal also made in Italy and for the lining we have this 100% cotton lining with a twill weave that allows it to have a tiny bit of stretch which is also from Italy and it's all handcrafted by one leather maker in New York City and we are collaborating with them actually so here's their Instagram as well you can go check out their other work too as well they make great work and each bag will be labeled with what number you purchase so at the very end of the bag we have these staples that are on there the steel staples so as you can see the first one has one and the second um, unit has two so person who gets number 10 will have 10 staples on theirs and theirs will look hella crazy and this thing holds a macbook 13 and it is pretty sizable it holds a decent amount of stuff like i could put my jacket in here and everything and it's nice and compact it's not like that massive i've been using it as my everyday bag and i personally am in love with the leather that we grabbed and just everything about the bag is just very beautiful and i'm very happy with how it came out and if you're wondering how how you're gonna get your hands on one of these very exclusive bags you can go ahead and check out the Instagram or just keep watching my Instagram stories at some point I will post about it and you'll get access to getting one of these bags but yeah that's all that we changed on the bag it's looking really nice very beautiful yeah that's it for now wow you stayed till the end of this video and you watched the vlog that I put in this video I appreciate you so much for watching me and continuing to watch me. This video might not have been a banger. This video probably was on the lowest of the lowest in terms of videos that I've made in the past. I just wanted to make this video very quickly. I probably could have done better. I just wanted to have this discussion just in general because it was on the top of my brain. And if anything, this really did feel like it was like podcast episode on my Patreon, which I recommend going and watching, or I, I would say listen to. But if you stuck around this long, watch one of these videos at some point, I probably will be in a new apartment because I've been looking. So I'll see you then. Later losers, until the next one. I'll see you then. So just because I own a DNG secondhand, does that make me a racist? <laughs> Wait, no, cut that out. My opinion only matters if you believe what I'm saying has value. So keep that in mind.